Has anyone ever told you not to do something? Like, don't touch that, it's hot, or don't go there, it's probably dangerous, and you kind of have to test it out for yourself. Like, why would, you know, why would they be telling the truth? I'm gonna touch the hot plate anyway, and then you burn yourself. Or I'm gonna go out and, you know, do the dangerous thing, go jump off a building, even though my mom told me it probably wasn't safe, and you'll probably get killed. <laughs> um, that sometimes plays in our eating. When you tell yourself not to eat something, you instantly want it. When I tell myself that I shouldn't eat the donut, I instantly want a Krispy Kreme donut. And I think that if I don't go get one within the next day, I'll probably die. <laughs> I am a fan of eating really, really good food. And when I tell myself not to eat stuff, I end up just waiting a week and then gorging on it later. And today, I want to tell you why dieting is bad and why intuitive eating is the best way to kind of manage your eating habits. Intuitive eating is um, came up was come up from these two women that wrote a book and saw all of these women and men dieting and getting nowhere. And um, basically, there's ten principles, and today I'm going to go over those ten principles. Um, some of them briefly, and some of them just a little bit more in detail, and talk about why dieting is bad and why this is better for you. Um, the first principle is to give up the dieting mentality. Don't tell yourself that you know you need to give up this or you need to count calories or you need to you know you can't do this you can't do this you can't do that, and um, because that's depriving you. That's not that's not good for your health. It's not good for your mental health, let alone your physical health. Judy Mao Letter on Livestrong.com said that up to 50% of women are on a diet. Up to 90% of teenagers diet regularly and 50% of younger kids have tried to diet. 62% of adults are obese, and nine million children are obese, according to the Center for Disease Control. So why are half the women and men on a diet and still 62 million of them obese? Because diets aren't working. They're not working, and because we're not losing weight, we're just constantly trying new diets, new diets, more fad diets, and it's just not working. You have to try and change your lifestyle. Um, Larry Oz, a natural health and personal development advocate, said the negative effects of dieting can just obstruct the ability of the body to manage and cope with sudden changes caused due to dieting itself. So your body, by dieting and depriving yourself of these things, your body loses its ability to cope with diet changes and it loses its ability to adapt. The next three principles are to honor your hunger, make peace with food, and challenge the food police in your mind. Eat when you're hungry. Eat because you need fuel and because you need to eat to live. Don't eat because you know you think you have to or because it just sounds like the right thing to do at the time. Pay attention to how you're feeling. Make peace with food. Like I said before, don't deprive yourself. You're allowed to eat the chocolate cake or the donut, and that's fine. When you're telling yourself not to, like I said before, you wait a week and then you end up eating a whole cake instead of a piece which doesn't sound too bad, but still. <laughs> challenge the food police in your head. When you hear yourself say, no, I can't eat that, challenge it with these principles because that's bad. Telling yourself no isn't a good thing. And when you let yourself do something, you'll be happier with yourself in the long run. Don't feel guilty when you eat something because it's about the big picture. It's not about you know that one piece of chocolate cake or that one donut. You just have to challenge your mind and be aware of what's, what you're eating and how much you're eating. The next step is to honor your fullness. Pay attention to how full you are and how much you're eating. Stop halfway through and kind of assess how full you are. And diets cause you to just eat a little bit here and a little bit there and you're never really full. If you allow yourself to get completely full and not overly full, then you're going to end up being healthier in the long run. In the long run. My mom always told me to save room for dessert when I was younger. You've probably heard that too from a parent or friend. Save room for dessert, you know, we've got something really good. And you end up eating your entire meal and more. And then you still think, hmm, I still kind of want dessert. And you end up being so full that you think you're just going to explode. And that's not the way to do it. Pay attention when you're eating your meal to how much dessert you're going to have. Or whatever else you want to have afterwards. The next is to remember the satisfaction factor. Food is yummy, and don't you know? let yourself feel bad for eating the foods that you like. Pay attention to how much you like something and eat the foods that you think taste good. 
you are allowed to eat the yummy foods. Reish and Tribble, the people that wrote the intuitive eating book and the website, said that by providing yourself this experience, the enjoyment factor, for yourself, you will find that it takes much less food to decide if you've had enough. When you're paying attention to how much food you like, you're not, or how much food you've had and how much you like it, you're not gonna overeat or you're not gonna undereat either because a diet tells you you shouldn't have something because you're enjoying it. Honor your feelings without using food. Don't eat because you're sad, because you're unhappy, or because you're bored. I know I sit in my room and I think, I'm so bored, I'm gonna go down to the refrigerator and see what's exciting in there. You know how many times there's something exciting in there? Never. My refrigerator is so boring and I stare at it for 10 minutes at a time thinking, I'm bored and I'm just gonna have the, you know, whatever's in here, the leftover Thanksgiving food, the leftover cake, the leftover donuts. I really like donuts. <laughs> Um, so yeah, control your feelings, just be aware, use wisdom in, um, in how you feel and what you're eating. The next is probably two of my favorite principles that you don't find in any diet. It's to honor your body and to honor your genetics in a way. And you have to, you have to know who you are. If you're born into a family like myself that has bigger hips, I'm not ever going to fit into a size two and I can, like, I'm okay with that. You have to be aware of you know, how you were made and respect that from yourself. Diets aren't encouraging that. Diets are encouraging you to be what that size two model is or to look like that guy who's all beefed up in the magazines. And you might, you just might not be built like that and that's completely okay. Diets are telling you to change everything about yourself and what the intuitive eating diet is telling you is to be the best you can be. Um, the next is to honor your health. And when I first kind of heard about this, my mom took the class from this lady who, um, you know, studied intuitive eating and um, she, she, my mom came home and she said, there's this new way of eating, um, kind of a new way of living and you can eat whatever you want and it's going to help you lose weight. I was like, huh? Like how can I, at any given moment, I probably want a donut. So if I'm eating whatever I want, I'm going to eat a donut every single day. But the way it works is that when you and, you know, allow yourself to eat everything, you're not suddenly craving it anymore. That first week that I started, tried doing this, I had a donut every single day. I drove by DK Donuts on Chapman Avenue on my way home and got one or two donuts because they were yummy. And, but after a week or so, I didn't find myself craving a donut anymore. I was kind of over it, which was strange for me because I like donuts. And you, when you stop depriving yourself and you allow yourself to eat these things, you stop craving it. You stop hearing that no in your head and you think, I could live without it. It's not worth the, you know, it's not worth the hassle today. You just have to be smart about what you're eating as well, too, though. Honor your health. Pay attention. Educate yourself about nutrition. It's okay to eat the cake and the donut or, you know, all those yummy foods that you like, but it's definitely okay to educate yourself on nutrition. The last is exercising is important. And pay attention to what feels good your body. I hate running. It's literally just the worst thing in the world to me. It is some kind of torture made up by somebody that thought it would be funny. It's not funny. It's terrible. So I don't, why make myself run? Why go to the gym and run a million miles, which I can barely run one, and be unhappy? I might be exercising and it might be good for me, but it's not making my body feel good. So I picked something else. I was an ice skater my whole life and I got back into it. And so now I skate every day instead of running. And that's how I choose to do it. Find the exercise that feels good about your body. Don't do what those diets and the fads and the exercise fads are telling you. Just, you know, go work out at the gym for two hours and, you know, you'll be fine. Those, in the magazines, those little um, <coughs> exercises that they give you to do, you know, every night before you go to bed. That's, I don't want to work out before I go to bed. I want to go to sleep before I go to bed. I don't, <laughs> I don't have no desire to work out. So just pay attention to what feels good to your body. So the main goal is to create a balanced relationship between you and your body and your health. Diets force you to make unhappy choices and in the end will make you an unhappy person. Intuitive eating will give you, encourage you to get wisdom and to pay attention to how you feel and about your body. It gives you an awareness. You have to really be aware. This is the best way to get healthy because it does encourage you to get, to pay attention and to be aware of how you're, 
have how you're eating, how you feel, you know, all the decisions you've made. And it makes you feel good about them. It doesn't make you ever feel guilty like a diet would. It challenges you to make different goals. And everybody's different. We all have different goals. We have different ideas of how we should look. And intuitive eating can fit into any of those goals. You can, you can still, you know, be the macho guy that like, like Maurizio who likes to work out all the time and he, I know he wants to be a bodybuilder and there's, there's certain things that go with that, but you still can take the principles from intuitive eating and challenge um, those ideas of telling you not to eat something. And if you don't want to eat something, then don't, but don't tell yourself no when you really want to. Um, so yes, that, I got a little bit lost. But um, intuitive eating is the best way to live your life because there's so many, it fits into so many different lifestyles and it's so much better than dieting because dieting tells you that you're not good enough when every single one of you are. Joel, what did you think? Uh, I think the delivery is pretty good. Uh, she the subject was probably related to a lot of people in here, whether it was like or trying to lose weight or something. Uh, she's pretty much she knows how to talk without uh, without being nervous or anything. And I thought it was a pretty unique uh, way of it was not like a speech that had like bodies in it. It was, it was kind of a, a unique way she talked about the 10 steps. And yeah, it was pretty good. No okay. Yeah, I was a little concerned about the uh, steps in the intuitive eating process because it sounded like it was going to be uh, an informative speech on this. And I think that sometimes it wanders in that territory. But since you're advocating it and since uh, there's often a criticism of uh, dieting in the process, I see a little bit more controversy that's going on there. I think you could develop some arguments about the failure of dieting a little bit more. You had, a, I think, a pretty good argument talking about the number of people who are obese and the number of people who are on diets. Um, there, I think there's a lot of information that suggests that dieting is problematic, and so that part of the argument could be, could be a little bit thicker. I do think sometimes the... Uh, the steps in the intuitive eating process that you're describing are uh, a little abstract, a little confusing. Um, the second point, for instance, when you describe it, it, it actually sounds like it's, it's self-contradicting. And so uh, I wasn't quite sure what it is you're supposed to be doing on that point. I know that a lot of it seems, to, like it says, a lot of it seems to be intuitive in nature. Um, I think that uh, you need to explain uh, what kind of success these kinds of programs have had. Uh, you use personal experience, I think, pretty well, and I think those are good illustrations. Um, but like I said, if you're gonna make it convincing, I think we need something that's a little bit more generalizable. And I'd agree with Joel about the delivery. I think you do a very good job speaking to the audience. Your eye contact is excellent. Uh, I, I think that uh, you've got a nice style and attitude in the way that you're speaking to the audience, the language, and the way you kind of, uh, you know, joke about and laugh at a couple of things that are going on. I like all the donut jokes. That's fine. You know that sort of thing. <laughs> that that worked well. Um, you know, and so those are, those I think are good illustrations. Most for the most part, I thought your your nonverbal delivery issues were pretty solid. There were a few spots where you're rocking back and forth on your heels, but it wasn't it wasn't distracting per se. I just noticed it at one or two points. So you might pay attention, see if any of those things bother you when you're watching your video again. All right, thank you.